No, I think I think one of the things that I'm actually seeing the most of, and it's actually something that we put in the assessments, is it's important to help with some of the details of these are the things that we ultimately want you guys to be able to work on. But I think some of it is even taking them back to the original why. Because I think that's going to be the thing that's ultimately going to help you raise the people, raise the volunteers that you need. Because sometimes you have parkers, you have greeters, you have all of these things. And the reason you have it is because other churches do. Versus, right. versus saying, what are we actually trying to accomplish? Well, hi, everybody, and welcome to the Grow Leader Podcast, where we grow leaders that grow churches by helping them reach their full potential. My name is Matt. So glad to have you with us today, sitting right beside my pastor, Pastor Chris Hodges. It's been the best week ever of Man, all time. And I'm, I'm still trying to recover just a little bit. I mean, we just had an amazing Grow Conference, um, and we just uh, had our Motion Conference, 15,000 plus students worshiping God. Matt, I don't think there's many things I've ever experienced in my life better than watching that many young people worship God. It's, I, I actually just stood in, in amazement at, you know, literally, I don't think I ever saw one student not with their hands lifted right. toward heaven, worshiping God, taking notes, hearing the word of God. It's just something very, very special. We, we hear so much about this generation and how, man, they're distracted. They really don't want to be a part of church. That is not what we're seeing yeah. at all. Yeah, and now we're in 21 days of prayer and our church is gathering every morning at 6 a.m. to seek God. And all of you guys that are, are grow churches or have part of uh, what we do, we'd love for you to tune in or you can watch them, uh, these prayer services on demand. Join us for 21 Days of Prayer. It's an amazing, amazing season that we're in right now. One of the things I loved about Girl Leader Conference, had so many people come up and say, hey, we love the podcast. Like, the podcast is helping Good. us. I had one pastor, Pastor Mark in Amarillo, Texas, who said his entire staff team gets together every single month incredible. and watches the podcast together and they discuss everything we're talking about. And so I appreciate you guys listening. Share it. If you know somebody that needs to hear what we're sharing today, uh, help us get the word out. Excited about today and the yes. season that we're going into. Yeah, because one of my favorite sessions at the conference, and I think one of the most popular from what I've heard, was the session that we did on health assessment. How, how do you know if you're healthy or not? And of course, in this podcast, Matt, we... We really want to bring actual tools. That's why staff groups do just right. gather around to listen to this because we're not just conversational. We want to have yeah. some fun, right? But we're actually trying to give you some things you could actually take some notes on. And if you're working out or in commute right now listening to this, we have show notes. Well, yeah. everything we're going to give you, and I hope to give you a lot of content today on health assessment. And I have actually have one of our GROW team members with us here today. In fact, I just learned how to say his name correctly, <laughs> and I've known one. you for years because it's a Danish name. He's from South Africa and it's straw up. You got to say it like a straw yep. up. Yep. But, it, but it's spelled star up, but it's straw up. Straw up. Everybody yeah. welcome Brad Straw up to uh, the Thank you to be Pro here. Leader Podcast today. So Thanks for joining be us today. Absolutely. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. The first South African we've ever had on the podcast, <laughs> by the way. Yeah, that's, just that's, say that's, something that's, that's so they can hear your, <laughs> hear your accent. Put another shrimp on the barbie. That's actually <laughs> Australian. <laughs> Yeah. It's actually Australian. Which in Alabama, you're, it's all the same no, place. No, so thankful so to be here. Great. Seriously, so tell what an honor. Tell everybody what you do on the Grow Leader team. So mainly, one of the things that I did is I helped build the, the health assessment that obviously we do. We go to churches, we're able to do that. Um, but then I'm one of the assessors. So I'm able to go to churches and secret shop and kind of come in as a first-time guest and you know help them see things that maybe they haven't seen themselves. Right. So I want to play the, the part of the pastor listening today. And, and we've heard you say a phrase a lot the past year. You've said it on the podcast several times, time in erodes awareness of, yeah. right. which a lot of what we're doing with health assessment was based even out of that entire thought. What, what, what's the vision of us doing health assessments and helping churches? Yeah, because um, um, something that's not going well is hard to detect in the early stages, but easy to cure. So good. It's great. It's just like, it's almost like staged cancer. You could have cancer and not know it in the early stages. Mm -hmm. But of course, cancer is easier to treat in the earlier stages. It's easier to detect in the later stages, but yeah. harder to yeah, cure yeah. So true. in the later stages. So what we're trying to do is, is kind of check on things before they get in terrible trouble. Yeah. And by the way, this is just a leadership principle too. You, know, you don't wait till your marriage is in crisis to 100%. go to counseling. I've, I, I've actually recommended for couples to go into counseling when everything's going well, right? Yeah. Because you still don't know what you don't know, and if there's something that you could kind of head off at the pass. So the 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 spirit of this health assessment is. Most of us think we're actually doing well. In fact, I tell the story <laughs> of the first time we had a secret shopper at Church of the Highlands. And of course, 
uh, I, I, thought, I thought we were crushing it, you know, so I was kind of happy for someone to come and just tell us how great we actually were and to come in. And we actually hired them. I didn't even tell anybody on the staff that they were there. No one, not even on the That's lead helpful. team. So this was a completely anonymous assessor. I mean, terrifying. Uh, yeah, because <laughs> yeah, you're a campus pastor and you, and you never know when we're going to actually have one come by That's your right. campus. Okay. That's right. Um, but, but, I, but I mean, to park the car, yeah. to uh, experience right. a greeter, to check in a child, to time how long it takes to check in children, to actually ask them to see how secure our children's space is and see if he could get in there undetected. And he so could, good. and he didn't, by the way, praise God for that. So good. But I mean, taste the coffee. I mean, walk into the room. Um, what did you not know? What was hard to understand? Did you not even know where the bathrooms were? Uh, how was the worship? How was the word? How did we, every part of it, and again, you know, this was at a point in our church where actually things were pr cranking pretty good. And um, as I thought, man, we're just going to get this glowing report. The brother had eight pages <laughs> of notes of things that we could do better. And we didn't even do them all. I think Matt wow. uh, and Brad, I think we just took about 12 of them wow. and worked on them. But we saw tremendous growth. And what it is, is that time in does erode the awareness of. Yeah. I, I say it this way, that we... And, you know, your car has a smell that only you can smell. You can't smell, but everybody yeah. else who gets right. in it they can. Do. Right, yeah, right. 100%. And it's not a good one or bad one. I'm just saying the more you're in something, the less you're aware of yeah. that thing. So one of the things that we're working on, and Brad, you've been so instrumental in this, is that coming up with then what do we actually assess? Like, what is church health? What does yeah. that even look like? Yeah. Um, what are we looking for? Yeah, and uh, and I actually took you guys on a trip with me yes. to a church. I actually brought these these guys who are helping me do these assessments, and we even talked about what to look for. What you know to make sure we're all on the same page. And then Brad wrote this. You know, how many pages is it? It's twenty nine. 29 page assessment that these guys go into and they can check boxes and answer questions and then it's brought back to uh, Lee Domain and me and we 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 review it and then we have conversation with these churches in the hopes of this one simple principle guys and that is we're just going to get better yeah. because we don't really focus as much as people think it's it's one of the misnomers that kind of drives me crazy sometimes right. that people think we're just numbers and goal oriented we're not yeah we're not at all we're we're focused on health because healthy things grow well yeah. and one of the things you say I mean, many, many staff meetings is, hey, you're always talking about, hey, what's most important right now? What one thing, if we fix it right now, would make the biggest difference in our church? Literally, that is, if you want to know what our staff meetings look like, anytime Pastor Chris is sharing, he's talking about, hey, what one thing? And if it's baptisms, that's what we're all working on. If it's students, that's what we're all working on. Um, so the, the point we're trying to make, I, I love this, is that you, hey, pastor, leader, you have an area. Yeah. That you bunch of areas you don't know about, you're not even aware of, and we do too. Every single one of us do. So I, I know you've done just extensive work. The whole team has in putting this together. As you started to assess churches and, and and being with pastors and leaders, what are some of the things you're seeing the most of? What are the areas that are there? Some general areas that everybody needs help in, or that we all need to focus on right now. No, I think I think one of the things that I'm actually seeing the most of, and it's actually something that we put in the assessments is. It's important to help with some of the details of these are the things that we ultimately want you guys to be able to work on. But I think some of it is even taking them back to the original why. Because I think that's gonna be the thing that's ultimately gonna help you raise the people, raise the volunteers that you need. Because sometimes you have parkers, you have greeters, you have all of these things. And the reason you have it is because other churches do. Versus, right. versus saying, what are we actually trying to accomplish? Which obviously when we're coming and we're assessing, we're coming as a first time guest. I mean, when we get into our car, we pull up the websites and we're pretending we don't know where the church is. Right. So we're pulling it up and we're like, can we get the directions to the web, to the church from the website? We start there. And often what we realize is when you come, yes, there's people greeting, yes, there's people doing this. But I think what we try to, try to help churches understand is that there are people who are coming in and they are, they are anxious, they've been rejected, they're depressed, that's your first time guest. Right. And ultimately what we want people to feel is we want them to feel hope and love and accepted. And ultimately if we don't understand that even what we do in our greeter team is we're trying to move people from one state to another. And sometimes it's micro, it's they're coming in like this and all we wanna do is open them up and bring them like this. So ultimately when the message goes out, when worship happens, that they're ready to receive what needs to happen. So I think taking it back to the why, but from that, if that's our why, we wanna move people from a state of uh, shame to a state of hope. If that's our why, then we say, what are all the details that need to come in from the parking, from the greeting, from the lobby, from the coffee, from the ushers, from the worship, from the transitions. So we'll start 
inspecting every single point of those, and we actually have multiple points within each of those to make sure that we're moving people from one state to another. And let me be clear about one thing. This isn't just to, you know, um, for, it's not for perfectionism's sake. We're yep. not just trying to dot all the I's. And, it's to create an environment yes. where life can happen. Right. 100%. And that's our belief is that, you know, the Bible says, uh, King David wrote this psalm that says, you have shown me the path of life. Mm. And there is there is a there's an environment that you can create where growth happens. Yeah. And we're not talking about the growth of the church. We're talking about the growth of the individuals Individual, 100%. That's who so come where their lives can be changed. And that's why when I'm teaching it too, Matt, I always make sure they understand what are you even me even measuring in yeah. the first place? Yeah. So what even matters? How could... How, how do you even know what a touchdown is or how do you know what a win is? The way I said to, to staff teams, what is the it and how do you know when That's you great. have done it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it all begins, as Brad says, with that basic understanding that we're doing all these things, parking and children and coffee and transitions in the hopes of people knowing God, yes. finding freedom, yes. discover purpose, make a difference. We bring it back to these very, very clear measurables. And then what we do to do that is because those are our values and the things that matter to us, we're doing something to try to get them there, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. so if we want people to know God, we, we create a worship experience. Okay, the question is, did that worship experience help people know God? Well, it probably didn't if they didn't know the songs. Yeah. It probably didn't if, if, right. if, if you know, it was too much going on on yeah. the stage that was distraction from God. Yeah. So there's all these little details that we think, you know, we're not just trying to perfect lights. We're yeah. saying, hey, is this a conducive environment yeah. for people to have an encounter with Al Almighty God? And I've even heard you talk about in the past, you know, because we're talking about the the factors that the attender sees, mm -hmm. the attender experiences, but you've even told stories of going and talking to church staffs, you know, as an, when you're doing an external assessment for somebody, you say, hey, what's the vision of the church? And you get 20 different answers from- Yeah, they're all good answers. They're just different. <laughs> and so can you imagine- you know what a <laughs> what what any organization would look like if everybody thinks the touchdown line is it's in different. a different place. Yeah. So they're all doing their best. We don't knock the effort of churches, but what we're trying to do is bring in this outside eye and say, "Hey, let's get aligned." Yeah. Let's let's narrow the focus. Let's let's get some clarity. I think one of the best things that we do and Highlands has tons of room to improve as well. Yeah. But one of the best things that we do is is we have we, we bring as much clarity to every experience as we can that creates an environment where people, again, can know God, find yeah. freedom, discover their purpose, and make a difference. But you only know if that's actually happening if you're measuring some things mm -hmm. and ask yourself, actually, is it working? Mm -hmm. And so we're also looking at culture. We're looking at just how you know everything feels. Is there a spirit of joy in the place? Do people love God? Or are, are the people friendly? I mean, is there a spirit of excellence in the house? The passion of the leaders. So that's why there's 29 pages that yeah. we have come up with in this assessment tool. And which also, Brad, I want you to tell the pastors that are listening about how they can get their hands on this or how they could actually get someone from the Grow Leader team to come be a part uh, of this assessment process. Yeah, you can actually go onto our website, growleader.com and there's an area right there under um, resources you'll see it's called the Grow Leader Assessment. And then ultimately you can just uh, fill out a form there. It's gonna ask them a lot of details because yes, we wanna know about the church, but I think even some of the things that we wanna be able to help with is um, there's some metrics that you'll get to input, things like uh, attendance and what are your group numbers. And I think the reason for that and why that's so important is numbers are important, but what's most important is health. And that's why it's even called a health assessment. Right. It's 29 pages, but even at the top of the assessment, what you'll get is you'll get a health score. Exactly. Because what we're trying to do is we're trying to make sure that we're looking at all those things, we're looking at the experience, we're looking at the environment, we're looking at those first time guests who are coming, but we're just trying to figure out where are the areas that are that are going towards unhealth, which you're even speaking about, you want to fix things, you know, you want to get, you want to catch them early. So you're looking at what are the areas that are going towards unhealth and then ultimately how can we fix it? So ultimately the the assessment is something that we can do, but there's some churches that want us to come every year because they're like, hey, we they want should, to be, actually, they should. We want to be, it's like you go to the doctor to get an annual exactly. checkup. Yep. That's what this is. It is an annual checkup just to make sure that you're fixing the right things, you're improving the right things, and you're getting incrementally better. And in order for the doctor to help you, he needs numbers. We don't 100%. worship the numbers. We're no. not all about the numbers. So what right. we are is, though, are we, the way we say it is numbers are indicators of health. Yes. So they put a blood pressure cuff on you to find out blood pressure, and those are numbers. Temperature, heartbeat, oxygen, all these things point to 
not the blood pressure cuff, but to the health of the individual. We use these things. Yes. And what this assessment tool does is allow um, there to be this, this tool we can bring into uh, churches to actually you know, find out how we're doing. Yeah, and I, I love how you remind us all the time. Hey, guys, problems aren't bad. We, we have leaders. God gave us the gift of leadership because there would be problems. And if there are no problems, we don't need leaders. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and the, uh, yes, exactly right. And the water level is running out somewhere. Right. You know, I always say there's a lowest slat of everybody's bucket right. somewhere. And, and by the way, this principle is not just for churches. This, we should be doing this for ourselves, yes. which is, by the way, where I want to close this podcast today because I don't think this is just a tool for churches. This is a tool for homes, yep. marriages, individuals companies, organizations, if we're just catching things earlier, having some tool we can know that's greater than just our outside eye. Can I tell, I want to tell one story just to give an example of a place where we let numbers indicate something that I would have never dreamed we were actually unhealthy okay. there because our church was growing in the number of people who were getting saved, but percentage wise, the number of people being water baptized, which we think is a second step, yeah. was go actually percentage wise was going down, but the number was still high because mm -hmm. the number of people getting saved was high. Right. Are wow. you following me? Yep. So if you go just look at a baptism service, you'd say, this feels well, great. that's a lot of people getting baptized. This feels great. But when you looked at the numbers, it was actually percentage wise less than mm. a percentage of the people who were choosing Jesus less were getting getting safe. And it, when I, we saw the number, it shocked me because I would have said, man, we're doing great here. And then we did because we have this indicator, this health assessment. In our case, we did something that I always encourage churches and pastors to do, and that is let's fix it. And what we did is do both an internal and external audit, I call it, of that particular problem. So what that means is I, I actually got six people. I said, I'm going to give you two weeks to study us, Church of the Highlands, just study us and ask ask, did we change anything that's caused that to go down? Did, right. or, or did we move where baptism is? Did we change how we announce it? Am I mentioning it less in my messages? Anything you can find, you have two weeks. I got another six people to go to, I think they went to 20 churches that baptize a lot of people and see what they do that we don't do. So the two teams got together two weeks later. The external audit people had 20 ideas. The internal had about 10 ideas. So we have 30 actionable wow. items. Brad, Matt, all we did is 12 of the 30 and baptisms went up 400% in that next season. Yeah. And this is the spirit of it. Yeah. Just like you would do when you go to the doctor. The doctor says, hey, you know, your, your vitamin D's down. Let's let's have some supplements here to get you back healthy again. We want to do the exact same thing. Say we have dashboards. That's what we call them. They're, they're dashboards that we look at all the time for every area of our church. I, I want to talk, and I know that people are even curious about this. You're so passionate about personal dashboards and what you're looking at in your personal life how you're evaluating marriage, family, all those other things. What what does that look like for you? Like, how, when do you do it? How often do you do it? So I do it intensely once a year. At the, I, I love taking the 21 days of prayer and fasting at the beginning of the year and actually it's quiet my schedule, even though I'm at the church every day for right. prayer. But this is when I do my annual focuses. This is when I pray and really just try to get a lot of direction from God for the year. I set, they're really not goals. They're more like themes of my life for that year. I, I try to pray for, you know, kind of my, my personal word for the year, that for the church. It's a focused time for me. But throughout that process, I go through those 12 dials that I've given many times and we can post we'll them again. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we'll put them in the show notes again, the 12 dials that I assess. But then I also do it in a one day retreat day every month. So I tried at the beginning of a month. It doesn't always fall in the same you know, it doesn't fall on the first of right. every month because of the calendar. But I try to, at the beginning of every month, quiet my day. I need about six to eight hours. Well. And I get my calendar. I get into my, uh, my you know, what's going to happen that month. But here's something I want everybody to hear. You can't just always plan ahead. You've got to look back and say, how did that's I great. do? Yeah. What's, what's not working well? And yeah. that's the miss, I think. I think we get so busy, as one friend of mine uh, said it, we're so busy working in it, we forget to work on it. That's good. Yeah. And, and, and we're big about this here at Highlands. We, we debrief almost everything. We ask ourselves, how did we do? I just had one of our student pastors uh, do a, just a little devotional moment on stage. He came off the stage and said, how did I do? Why? Because we've created this culture of, 
And I said, bro, you crushed it. He said, he said but is there anything I can work on? And that's the spirit of what yeah. we want to have in this in, it, in our church. And I even think there's a, there's a cultural difference between needing feedback because you want it to look like you need feedback or wanting feedback from the right spirit. There's a spirit of security, but still wanting feedback all along the way. And we should want that as leaders. In every exactly. Area and there's some questions that I asked myself in that day that I was telling you before we started the podcast today. I don't think I've ever shared these. And they're kind of crazy. You know, I collect questions, but I want to give you a few health assessment questions. And uh, if you guys have any questions about them, I would yeah, I, I love I'm, I'm going to. So I have my own personal ones. My, my personal ones always, why do I exist? What am I doing? How am I doing? How will I succeed? What's most important right now? Those are the five are questions I ask myself and I ask this church nonstop. Uh, wh why do we exist? Why do I exist? What, what am I doing to accomplish it? How are we doing? How will I succeed? So what are the values that are going to drive it? You can't forget culture. Culture's always got to be in there somewhere. And then what's most important right now? But the, but the organizational questions, I've never shared these before. Um, because they're personal and they're, well, you just don't want people in your organization to know you're asking this all the time. Like, today's who, the day. Who needs, who needs to be sitting at the table and who doesn't need to be sitting at the table anymore? It's a great question. It's a great question. So these are just, you know, yeah. kind of bold questions to yeah. ask. Where are we manufacturing energy? Well, so where are we constantly trying to put fuel on something that's kind of refusing to burn? Mm -hmm. And wh why? Mm. Why why are we having trouble with that? Like where where I put in my notes here, where are we pretending to be excited? Well. So we're we because if you do that too long, you're gonna actually end up using so much emotional yeah. energy without any anything coming back. That's so good. And that's where burnout happens, where we're really not excited. Is there anything that we are promoting that we don't even like? We're telling people to do it, and we don't, we don't even want to do it. We don't want to do it. It's, these are just these so are, good. That's a great question. These are bold questions. Here's another one. Where do I make the greatest contribution to the organization? I think I love every that. leader needs to I ask that. that question because you can. You're always involved in a lot of things, right? But you really want to get to a place where you're not spending a lot of time on places where you're really yeah. not adding much to the equation anyway. And so I ask myself where. Where do I really fit best in the organization? Mm. Even as the senior leader, I don't think I need to be in every decision and every meeting, mm. but where would it be a crime if I wasn't in that meeting because of what I'm good at? And do you let that, does, does that move seasonally? With what's going on of in course the, it the does. church? Right. But it's also, it's, it's also related to skill. For instance, in my case, I, I did music in the church for 20 mm. years. I'm still involved in the songs that are chosen on a Sunday. That's not something every senior leader actually should do. Right. Yeah. But I do it because it is a it is a passion. It's a skill set, um, and so I think I make a great contribution to the organization by looking at that yeah. list yeah, e every Sunday. Where um, not maybe not everybody can. Here's another one: Who's not keeping up? Mm. I think we always have to ask about our team members, and am I the reason why they're not? Am I not resourcing them, encouraging them, training them? That's so helpful. Or maybe is they, are they never going to be able to keep up? Because what I've noticed about leaders is that they can take you to some levels, but maybe not to the next one. Yeah. It's just a great, um, a great, the great question. What have I fallen in love with that really needs to change? So it's our way, but not the best way. I want every church to ask that question because I think we fall in love with things that used to work. Yep. Uh, that especially because churches tend to be way more traditional and in love with past. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I'm I'm all for traditions and the past, but not but not where of something that's not working anymore. Yeah. You know, we got to be careful of that. And then I always ask myself this question: What would a great leader do? Mm. So if and and I won't name the names, but you can think of the names <laughs> that I would probably think yeah. of. If so and so was the pastor at Church of the Highlands, what would be the first thing that he would do or wow. she would do? What would a great leader do right now? You know, mm -hmm. and 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 I just kind of imagine. I've got more questions, but those are just some of the ones that I do for I assessment. Think, I think even one of the questions that you're asking there about what are the things that we fall in in love with. I think it's a great question because obviously, and you say this all the time, that the right way is the way that works. Right. And obviously, there was even a time for us we loved our motion model, and then based on a health assessment, you got to the place where PC, you were like, I think we need to relook at this, which we did, very similar to the baptisms. And everything changed because the season had changed. That's exactly right. And once we changed to match the season, we started experiencing that growth again. So Such wanna, a great question. I, I want to look at that exact thing. Because motion, motion is what we call our student ministry. Um, because you started talking to staff couples 
who right. had teenagers yeah. and gave staff couples the space to say, yeah, PC, we don't love it. Like it's not, like it's, if it's hard. Oh, one of them was the person who cuts my hair. Yeah. <laughs> and I, and I, and she was cutting my hair and says, she says, can I, can I mention something to you? And I said, sure. She goes, um, my kids need more than just a, a wow. once a month big youth group meeting. And I said, tell me more. Wow. So I was in love with our model because yeah. it's, a, it's a big youth group meeting with lots of kids getting saved. It was awesome, right? But here's a parent saying, my student, my kid needs more, you know? And so that's when I actually got a team together and said, is this just one person or is this systemic? Is this throughout our whole church where then this this deeper need for not just big big church, I mean, we still have that. Right. This big evangelistic service happens, but where that more, I call it the youth group we all grew up in, mm -hmm. where we, you know, you sit on the floor with a guitar and you go to Six Flags. And yeah, it's organic, goes, organic orga ministry. Yeah, exactly. And come to find out, especially coming out of COVID, that was a massive need. But thank God we were asking the question and listening to feedback that I didn't first see and, and really didn't want to, didn't want to hear it, but but you have to face when the doctor says, yes. "Hey, I've got some bad news, brother. You better do something about it." Well, right. Even if you don't like hearing that news, this that warning sign could actually save your life. Well, I, I love the you know that response when somebody gives you feedback, and it's not the feedback you wanted. Do you have the attitude of, "Hey, tell me more"? Like if, you, if it's a trusted source and you trust their heart and and what what they're saying, is it tell me more? But I also think there's an art because you've led us in this way to changing things where you don't jerk the wheel and throw everybody off. Like you can change it with vision. You, you don't have to change fast. What, what's just a thought about that as we lead through change? Yeah, so I always build a coalition. I always involve more people in the decision than just myself. There are times as senior leader, you just say, look, I'm the leader. Mm -hmm. This is what we're going to do. That's actually very rare for me. Mm -hmm. I love bringing people on to the decision-making process. I need the feedback, input. So I love focus groups. I'll even bring people that are beyond just the organizational chain of command. I'll, I'll, I'll grab them from random departments. We do this with our creative mm -hmm. space. We just bring people into the place where they can have a voice. And I'd love, I call it leading so with questions. Because Matt, I always think I know the answer. Yep. And I don't. But I always think I do. I go into every meeting knowing what I want everybody to do that week, right? But it's a whole lot better to go in saying, "Hey, here's what I want to do. How do we do it?" It's great, yeah. And just and and I think I already know, but but then I always they always make us better. So we listen, but then once we make a decision that we're going to turn something in a direction, now you're building the coalition. I call this the meeting before the meeting, and the meeting after the meeting. You want to have these lunches and make sure you get the buy-in of key people. And this is what leadership is. And now when we announce it to the church, you know, I can say like when we did with Motion, I came with that survey mm -hmm. of here's what we did the survey of what kids wish their parents knew. And when I read that to the whole church and every eye in the house is crying as now they, they want to change. These, they all yeah, want to yeah, change yeah. too. We brought them along for the journey that we were in. So great. So, so, so great. So if somebody wants to know one more time, somebody wants to know more about church assessment, how they can be involved. Yep. It's on the website. Right on the Grow Leader website. On the Grow Leader website. If you, if you have a question about any of that, please email us info at growleader.com. I'm going to get the rest of those questions somehow. I don't, I don't yeah, know. Yeah. And how. I want, I want to encourage, before we close, I want to encourage pastors to um, self assess. And then outside, have outside assessors. So I have both. Yeah. So you need to learn how to do it yourself. Ask yourself questions. Have times with God. Look back, not always forward. Do that. Do it on a regular basis. Have some type of health assessment. You, for instance, get on this. You can, I can get on the scales at home without a doctor yep. and know if I'm not taking care of myself. Okay, right. so there's ways for us to self-assess, but then you have to bring the doctors in too and yeah. say, hey, tell me what I don't know. And I would just encourage every pastor um, that's listening and every leader that's listening, involve people in your life. They, they might not even be as honest as they need to be the first time because they don't know if you're sincere in that ask. Mm -hmm. Say, hey, was, was that message good? Oh, yeah, it was great. No, really, was it? <laughs> Did, was, <laughs> is is there ways to get better? And yeah. I have that with mentors in my life. You know the you know the old saying for for grow leader. We do this with models and mentors, mm -hmm. models and mentors. Bring them into your life. Give them permission uh, to speak in your life, and just watch what happens as all of us get a whole lot better. 
So much incredible content today, Brad. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thanks, Brad. We have to do this again. Love to hear it about how we're growing, even assessments uh, later on. Hey, don't forget, growleader.com is your place for all things Grow Leader. Uh, it's fall. We're excited. Uh, I know you're, I'm praying your church is growing. We're going to be in some cities close to you very, very soon. Denver, Colorado, Canton, Canton Ohio, Ohio, Miami, Florida. Yep. We're coming to you in the month of September. If you're in those areas, we'd love to have you there. Have the best week ever. We'll see you next time on the Grow Leader Podcast. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. And we also want to say a big thank you to all of our partners that help make the Grow Leader podcast happen each and every month. For over 80 years, the Western Investment Foundation has helped churches with their borrowing and their investing needs. Whether you're dreaming of a new opportunity or seeking wise counsel about resource management, WIF can assist you. You can learn more about them at wifonline.com slash grow leader. Next is our newest partner, Studio C. Studio C can help you know your people and grow your church. They combine strategy, technology, and communications to maximize church member engagement. You can bridge the engagement gap and transform your church's impact with Studio C. Learn more about them at their website. It's thestudioc.org slash growleader.